from the Department of Fire and Emergency Services. And Steve's delivering a presentation outlining the major projects they've got going on and key priorities for the Kimberley in line with their, their legislative responsibilities. And climate change is, is extending duration of bushfires and they're working with that, that information. And DFS also works, as most of us know, with a wide range of stakeholders, including ranger groups, pastoralists, local government, etc. So really looking forward to see what Steve's got to say. So welcome up, Steve. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, technology. Um, thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, firstly, just uh, like to acknowledge the traditional custodians throughout Western Australia <clears throat> and their continuing connections to land, waters and community. Uh, we pay our respects to elders past and present. Um, my name's Steve Longo. Uh, I'm the acting superintendent for uh, DFES in the Kimberley. Um, I'd also still, uh, just before, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Honourable Peter Foster, MLC, and also uh, Shire of uh, Windham East Kimberley President Dave Menzel and everyone here today. So thank you very much for, for giving me the opportunity. Um, myself, uh, I've been a, a firefighter and officer for 24 years. Uh, of the last 10 years, I've been up here in the Kimberley and Pilbara. Uh, so, you know, been working up here for those last 10 years and, and been involved in, in fires uh, across uh, that landscape. Sorry, I'll just find my clicker. Um, and so, yeah, on behalf of the Fire and Emergency Services Commissioner, Darren Clem, and the Substantive Superintendent, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to come. Uh, Going to discuss, as, the, as it says up there, utilising science and te technology to better understand the changing landscape. Um, and I think we all know that the landscape is changing uh, and, and is changing um, ongoing and we do need to continuously improve as, as we've spoken about in, uh, in all our methods. No, it doesn't want to... Oh, there we go. All good. Um, so what am I going to be talking about today? So I guess um, as... as sort of mentioned, it's really around the uh, two-pronged attack, about the science, about what we're doing in the landscape. But firstly, I'm just going to talk about our, our legislative responsibilities from the Department of Fire and Emergency Services. Um, you know, we have a responsibility to the community um, and in those responsibilities, under fire, um, so under the, where the, the FES Commissioner is the fire, uh, is the, is the, has a management agency, for fire across the state. And so with that comes certain responsibilities um, and requirements. Um, we operate under certain acts and legislation, uh, those being the Bushfires Act, Emergency Management Act, uh, Fire Brigades Acts are the, are the main ones that we operate under. And under that auspice and under that uh, hazard plan for fire, we have responsibilities on that within that, and that's in prevention, preparedness, uh, response and recovery. So I've sort of outlined those, and I'm going to talk, discuss those just, just briefly. Um, mitigation, so within the prevention space, as you can see up there, I've got a number of things listed. Um, one being land use planning. So we talk about land use planning. We talk about building. Where do we building in bushfire prone areas? So we, we've heard the term bushfire prone areas and where we are. So it's all about managing land as to where we have to build, where we can build, and building to certain standards. Um, prescribed burning, which is obviously what we want to talk a fair bit about uh, today. Um, that's undertaken by local governments, DFES, DBCA. Um, and some other ag and other agencies which operate under memorandums of understanding with DFES. Um, a number of uh, and so we know that there's a number of agencies that uh, are involved in prescribed burning. Within pres prescribed burning, we're talking about um, aerial, aerial prescribed burning and burning uh, in the landscape uh, via on, on land as well. Um, vegetation and fuel modification where we're not dealing with prescribed burns. We're obviously looking at 
modifying that fuel so we, we can do other strategies or alternative strategies such as uh, mulching, slashing, spraying and along those sorts of lines. Uh, fire breaks, when we're talking about fire break and hazard reduction um, matters, we're talking about um, ensuring that we're putting in uh, under the Act and, and uh, that's um, enforced by local government, fire breaks and along those sorts of lines and other management opportunities there to ensure that, we are, that we've got some hazard reduction areas uh, managed. Um, prescribed burning, uh, sorry, uh, prohibited and restricted burning times. So restricted burning times, if we know the, across the Kimberley, local governments have their own restricted and or uh, prohibited burning times. Across the Kimberley, it's all restricted or unrestricted. So restricted, we know, is for the Shire of Windermere East Kimberley is from the 1st of April to the 14th of January each year. Uh, for Halls Creek, that area, it's the 1st of April till about, the, um, I think about the 31st of December. They can be managed um, according with the LG and in, consulta in consultation also. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, that means anybody who puts light fire in the landscape within those within those times requires burn permits. Those uh, uh, need to be enforced, and they need to have burn permits before they can even and and do any of those uh, that sort of burning. Uh, total fire bans. Okay, uh, um, we don't tend to have too many of those up here. We have, or well, touch wood, this year we haven't, uh, to my knowledge, just yet. But uh, total fire bans, where Fez Commissioner comes out through a risk assessment of what's going on, weather conditions, uh, number of fires that may be in the landscape at the time, dictates that we're not, with no fires, we'll be have a total fire ban day in relation to ensuring that we're not gonna exacerbate fires that we have in the landscape or get any uncontrolled fires when we, if, if they get out. Um, and lastly, the, oh, one of the ones there is bushfire risk management plans. So we're involved in um, advice around bushfire management plans for different communities, um, areas, with a, a sort of a tenure blind uh, approach to that. So we provide advice with, uh, with bushfire um, risk management plans also. Um, the one I've got there next is in relation to arson and fire investigation. Um, we're lucky enough to have um, a, uh, the detective senior sergeant from arson, the boss of arson, come up today um, to have a, a discussion. That's, uh, there we go. Um, so I'm not going to steal his thunder, but he will come up and have a discussion later on. So, and in relation to fire investigation and, and reduction strategies, uh, it's a shared responsibility between police and, and um, DFES and a number and other controlling agencies. Okay, in that there's a variety of strategies that we uh, that we attempt and and, and use across the state. Uh, albeit, so this this week, uh, I've actually engaged in some regional briefings uh, with DFES and um, between WA Police and our fire investigation unit. So we've all this week started from Broome. We had a volunteer leaders forum down there and we've started progressing up through the Kimberley, finalising in here tonight, talking to um, all our volunteer units, police and other ranger groups that have been, that have been in, in those areas. So Fitzroy Crossing, Derby, along those more arterial routes as we've come up and having the discussion about arson, fire investigation and we'll, what we've got in the landscape at the moment. Um, also with those bushfire arson investigation strategies, um, which is like so, something like Strike Force Vulcan, which um, I'm sure Tom will have a, have a discussion about, which is more metro-based. Um, excuse me. We also uh, have the Juvenile Family Family and Fire Fa Awareness Program. So one of those strategies is all about education. Um, we know there's a number of deliberately fires across the state all the time, it's all about engaging the community and trying to, to stop that, okay? And that is one of those programs is using the Jaffa program, which I've got some pamphlets out the back if anybody would like to come and have a discussion. It's all about having that one-on-one, -on -one, have it getting that, that person that's, um, or that child that's had those issues and has been lighting fires, it's about trying to engage and educate with those people. Um, We've also got extinguish arson signage, arson uh, scheme, arson reward scheme, and obviously the Crime Stoppers number to be able to uh, to um, report those in. 
So in preparedness, so when we're talking about preparedness, um, we're, from an agency perspective across the state, we use certain policies and procedures internally. That the biggest one being that we have the WA Fire and Emergency Services Wafers Manual. That is our, um, our operations manual in, in how we manage fire across the state uh, in regards to incident management uh, in, in, for all management across the, over those, in, um, those fires and those emergencies. Uh, not just dealing with fire, obviously, but we are talking about just in general earthquakes, all the hazards that we are responsible for, which there are a few. Uh, from a regional perspective, we have regional district arrangements. Uh, so with DBCA, we have an ongoing, uh, we have memorandums of understanding and we also have interagency agreements where it's mutual aid, we all assist each other in, in um, fighting these, these incidents and fires. From a local perspective, we have local emergency management arrangements. They're within the LEMCs, uh, local emergency management committees, which are local to each shire. So we all sit on that we, as an emergency services and we all have a buy-in as to how we deal with those emergencies across, across our uh, government areas. For fire weather forecasting, so we have a dedicated, DFES has a dedicated uh, fire weather and, and weather called SOCMET. He's, he's a state operations centre, uh, Bureau of Met Meteorologists. So he's there uh, or she is there dedicated to DFES and produces fire weather, outlooks, all that sort of information for me uh, and, and us as for any incidents that we need. Uh, from, a, from a preparedness from a local level, we also have uh, resources that come up specifically for these high fire seasons. So we have fleet and resources, be it personnel and vehicles to be up here to be able to combat fires that would get into the, in the uh, areas on the dry season. Uh, sorry, in the in the late dry season. Um, so where we're at with response, okay, so response is uh, a major, major part of DFES uh, charter and in, in regards to response, you know, we, we, we respond to strategic priorities uh, and they're listed there, um, the greatest one being and in regards to the protection of life, okay, so it's the protection and preservation of life, this is fundamental, um, and the overarching uh, strategic control priority for DFES. But if you can see um, down there, there's a number of those, but they're including including um, protection of critical infrastructure, community assets, uh, residential properties, assets supporting individual livelihood and financial uh, sustainability, protection of environment and heritage values. Okay, and how do we align to these? Well, everything we do uh, in this in our incident management, uh, be it prescribed burning or mitigation, aligns to these strategic control priorities. Uh, and it's very, um, it's part of our charter and how we, we operate as an organisation or as a department. Um, what's weighed heavily in the last few years, so uh, back in 2013, uh, there was a transfer of control of uh, local, from local government to DFES in regards to their bushfire fighting and local government appliances. So the bushfire brigades, so we and the Pilbara are the only areas in the state which have full control over the bushfire brigades as well in regards to response. So the local governments all got together and decided, look, we're, we're struggling here, um, we really want some assistance, can you help? And 2013 we began a three-year project uh, I was incorporated in that project whereby they transferred that control and management of those fire, uh, of those fire appliances and the response from the bushfire brigade. So we basically uh, started managing all those white trucks um, and the, the bushfire brigades. Um, look, it's been very successful. I then rolled it out down in the Pilbara also, so it was down there and instrumental in that. And I have to say it's been hugely successful. Um, local governments are, are really uh, well speaking about it and uh, will continue with that project. Or it's no longer a project, it's actually a memorandum of understanding. Understanding that legislatively, Bushfires Act covers certain things. There is amalgamation of the, the um, Emergency Management Acts and the Emergency Acts which is occurring. Uh, that hasn't quite finished yet, so that's why we still operate it under a memorandum of understanding. Um, so in the recovery phase, so if we're talking now about recovery, 
um, we play a role in recovery. Uh, traditionally, we, we would suggest that it was always maybe back on the local government uh, for recovery, but for recovery, if you can see with um, you know, Cyclone Saroja and things uh, that have happened in the past, we are really heavily involved in recovery now. Um, uh, as the, the controlling agencies, we both uh, we have a role in the relief of recovery and for relief and recovery during emergencies. Uh, we communicate with the local uh, recovery and state recovery co coordinators, uh, so we work hand in hand. And this is while incidents are still running. So while incidents are running, we are starting to collect data and collect that information. And we, what we do, what, what we call a, um, a crew of, um, <coughs> an impact assessment, and that's ongoing, it's a rolling document. So when we hand over uh, control or assist in handing that over to local government that we're not just giving them a big pile of trouble we're documenting that and we're actually doing our best to aid in that recovery process yeah. so that's one of those those roles also uh, we also now have a dedicated resilience and recovery section uh, which operates under the SEMC so strategy and emergency management command so I know it's probably uh, a little hard with the uh, it's not really that big, so you might not be able to read uh, everything, and I know it's a bit bland in that in that sense. But I want to talk a little bit about now um, the science and uh, and technology component um, in regards to what we're doing at the moment. So I'm going to talk about briefly understanding the landscape and the fire frequency, uh, the late versus early season fires in the Kimberley, uh, and what we do. Um, the bushfire seasonal outlook, which we produce, the DFES, what we produce. Uh, look at the Australian Fire Danger Rating System, which is now in incorporated and has uh, been rolled out across the state in line with Australia um, warning systems now. Uh, our aerial prescribed burning and how we operate within that space. The remote uh, bushfire investigation, so that aids us in discovering where uh, deliberately fires or fire ignition points are, so we can use remote sensing, uh, and ongoing research and other technologies. So understanding the, the, the landscape and the fire frequency, um, you know, our state we know is very large, and they rely a lot on local knowledge, science, field sampling, uh, and satellite technology to understand the current conditions and change in the climate and landscape. Um, you know, for awareness, we continue to monitor, study and collaborate with a various amount of stakeholders um, across the state. Uh, and you know, understanding this changing landscape, we want to learn uh, from the past to try and improve the future. Uh, throughout, <coughs> through data, and we can learn the frequency of the fires in the landscape. And through that, that we can then learn ongoing from there into the future. Um, in regards to understanding the landscape, uh, the fire frequency in that late and early season fires, um, you can't really see the figures and that we've got up here, but it's talking about um, in past years prior to carbon um, farming and then uh, while we have had carbon farming involved, um, what we, how we operate. Um, most fire managers plan to burn early in the dry season, okay, when it is, uh, and that's usually between the March and July, um, which is seasonal, and we, we try to achieve those cooler burns that are less likely, less likely to kill trees and shrubs in that time, okay. Reduce overall pasture production in the year of the burn. We want to reduce that production of perennials, um, especially burned often, and grazing resumes soon after fire. Um, we want to look at producing less greenhouse emissions than those late dry season burns uh, and with those devastating effects that they can and reduce the uh, the risk of bushfires later in the season which endanger people and property uh, so we really want to encourage to try to manage that earlier on in the season. Um, in 2019 uh, we conducted a, a fuel sampling to understand the vegetation conditions after bushfire and found dis found decrease in woody vegetation, but an increase in non-woody vegetation, some up to 20 tonnes per hectare. So this is some of the research that our bushfire technical services do uh, and is ongoing, so this is part of that. So I mentioned about the bushfire seasonal outlook. Um, so this is produced uh, yearly um, and seasonally by DFES, again, so we put this together um, for the northern and southern areas of WA. It requires us to understand the season that just happened, uh, the current landscape, 
and where and that that will help us better pre better predict and to, to determine what's happening in this landscape and at, at present. Um, it involves uh, the weather conditions, vegetation, health and growth, and will as well as the soil conditions, down to the deep soil, about six metres in depth, uh, for woody vegetation, and lastly, weather outlook you know, for, for that. So from, a, from community awareness and resource allocation uh, to our high threats period, okay? So that, that enables us to go, well, we, we know we're gonna be busy at this time of the year, so this is our high threat period, our high time, we need to associate that. Got four minutes, is that where I'm at? Three minutes, all right, I better keep going. Um, so the Australian Fire Danger Rating, I won't talk too much about that other than what we are doing now with our Australian Fire Danger Rating. Um, it forecasts and reports a di the danger of using up-to-date fuels, state data, spatial data and weather data, science technology. It, it takes advantage of a number of models now. We used to rely on one or two models. We now have a range of models um, and that is continuously improving and we have data that continually feeds back into that. Um, our annual aerial prescribed burning, okay, so we, we burn for the Kimberley annual prescribed burning, DFAS annually develop annual complex burn prescriptions um, with fuel risk and this is aligned to high, uh, to, to medium or high, have political, environmental, social, technical and legal uh, complexities about them and there is a lot of planning in place with that. Um, we have a burn objective, reduce the fire risk of unplanned late, late season wildfires for the protection and preservation of life, uh, critical infrastructure and residential property protection, environmental and heritage values. Um, yeah, this is done, the, the flight lines are determined through consultation with land managers, owners and with the regional DFES officer in charge and checked against the, the sensitive areas. The flight lines are recorded and used to determine burn review and success and incorporated strategic burns uh, the following year. So there is a lot of planning and science that goes into this protection of heritage assets, discussion with all the stakeholders, traditional owners and landowners which occur. Um, with remote area bushfire fighting, uh, sorry, with the bushfire investigation, we've just got remote sensing uh, um, capabilities which can now pick up where fires have started, initiating where they've burned, so we've got high-res high imagery that we can get and a number of um, satellite imagery that we can use to better, to better um, uh, identify where these have started. So the ongoing research and, and other emerging technologies we have, so we've got grass curing tools being developed and ongoing. Uh, the motor satellite imagery, um, which, is, which is giving us curing is four-day composite and it is old. DVES, in collaboration with Landgate, have been working on Himawari satellite technology, uh, derived grassland, and that's improving uh, every day. So we're doing really well there. We've got portable weather stations um, at areas across the Kimberley. We've got available a line scanner now, in, incorporated with DFES and aviation services, if required for large incidents. And we've got trail cameras capturing daily grass conditions also, which are incorporated, and we've actually put out some over the Kimberley today. So just finally, I'll just jump on some additional information and I'll, I'll reiterate what Kath said in the first, um, in the first slide in her presentation and that's, you know, there's, it's all volunteer-based uh, north of Geraldton. We struggle with volunteerism um, in general and I would encourage anybody who's interested in um, volunteering their time for firefighting and or emergency services to uh, encourage you to join and uh, have, a, have a come and have a chat to us down at the back about returning to coming to join. Extra information you can find is on Firewatch um, and North and Naffy, which um, you know, and we're going to be uh, going to have a chat there. And also, anything about your emergency emergency WA website is you go to for any fire fighting incidents and or prescribed burns across the state. Anything you need to know, the AFDRS, everything you need to know, the information you need to go to. I encourage you to go to that emergency WA website. I think I've uh, gone over, and I apologise for that, but. Um, Thanks, look, we're here for the day. I've got a stall down the back, so um, feel free to come down. I'll, I'll let it, everything keeps progressing now, but um, feel free to come and talk to myself or Agnes down the back and have a chat. So thanks very much. Steve. Sorry, Steve.